So this is a river. The river. And you really live by the river. By it and with it, and on it and in it. It's brother and sister to me. And aunts and company. And food and drink. And naturally washing. It's my world, and I don't want any other. What it hasn't got isn't worth having, and what it doesn't know isn't worth knowing. Lord, the times we've had together, whether in winter or summer, spring or autumn, it's always got its fun and its excitements. Hi guys, welcome to vlog 34, also known as part 2 to a water bowl's tale. I'm back at Marston Junction on this wonderful early midsummer morning. I'm here because it's an absolute mecca for water vol. Water vol is currently the fastest declining mammal in the UK. 95% loss since the mid 60s and this loss still seems to be unfortunately accelerating in certain parts of the country <laughs> water Waterfalls have always been a big part of my life my family would hire a barge and we hit the canals for a few days so I'm very comfortable here and I'm very conscious of this decline in the water vials because in the 80s, well, they were everywhere. I used to rescue them all the time from locks. Best chance in summer for seeing them though, and as you'll recognize from part one, was this little system of bait with apples and my trail can. Two sets of two apples over two two-day periods, and then of course, a lot of waiting. The main reason for the loss of water voles apparently would be twofold, down to the American mink, and also unsympathetic managing of canal and river verges. This is the main stay of what our local wildlife trust, the Warwickshire Wildlife Trust, have been doing to help our water voles. And that's stopping using corrugated metals to shore up the banks and instead using webbing and mesh which the water voles can gnaw through so they can create burrows. Biggest concern though for me was going to be the wash from passing boats. This is a very, very busy junction, Marston Junction. And I was uh, not so concerned about the apples necessarily, but the trail cam. The biggest wash it appeared that I got was with the green apples in this, this moment. And everything seemed to be okay and stable. In fact, if anything, it appeared to push in our pioneer vole for a first nibble.
voles are masterful at using cover. This is exactly why they like banks and systems like this. Lots and lots of vegetation. And this time of the year, simply, reasonably, no chance at all of seeing them. Which is why I was hoping the trail cam would come into its own. One thing I was really looking forward to though, I thought maybe that had been scuppered by the recent mowing of the verge and the uh, decorating of the water surface with grass, uh, was the arrival of hirundines and swifts skimming the water. But no, thankfully, they came for their midday drink. First a swallow. And then the ones I was waiting for, a squadron of swifts. One, two, and a third doing their dam buster run. Quite a challenge to try and maintain focus and frame on these guys. This is over in a flash, but really happy with this shot. What amazing birds. Cautious nibbling was getting more voracious. These little guys, the average age for these little guys is surprisingly, in the wild, only about five months. Their breeding season lasts from March right through to August and a female might have up to three to four pregnancies. Also lots of nocturnal activity, not just from the voles. There's a shrew there. And then the true possessor of the Monica Ratti a brown rat. Now, this only came once and briefly, but good enough to then draw comparisons. Obviously the voles having little nipped in ears. Wonderful to see some contact behaviour here. I uh, came to my conclusions that on this little bit of bank there were East Enders and West Enders. And, uh, this was the, the middle ground. I'd found the neutral ground between the two. Of course, that's probably not true at all, but uh, it entertained me.
I should be cool and fastidious as a naturalist, but those little paws are just great, aren't they? from the outlying fields, acres and acres of broad beans. And there's the last of the pink ladies. And I don't think that piece is going to see the light of day with any other vole. Always a little bittersweet to see the voles returning to an empty piece of dowling. I guess the good times are going to end at some point. Here was a surprise. I wasn't expecting the Dowling to perform as a nice perching post for a brown hawker overpositing. But all in all, it was a, a fantastic four day stretch of uh, intermittent filming and, of course, the huge rewards of uh, being by the canal and having such personal, intimate moments with these incredibly beautiful endangered voles. Please of course if there's any chance of supporting anybody, any NGO or conservation body near you that's looking after its voles, I believe mainly it'll be the wildlife trusts, please do show them your support and help get the water vole population back up to a real sustainable level. Well, that's it for vlog 34 guys looking forward to vlog 35 that won't be next week that'll be two weeks right now because wild is on a holiday so looking forward to seeing you again in two weeks time until then take care and goodbye <laughs>